Hey, what's up folks, and welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making some gnarling effects. So I'm working on this project. It's uh, a Keyblade. It's actually a cosplay prop. And what I wanna do is create some gnarling effects in the handle. Uh, so if you look at it from straight on, it looks it looks like you're doing pretty good, but then when you turn around, you start seeing that the effect kind of changes. It's no longer uh, doing a cross hatching pattern. And that's because this is just a series of circles. They're not actually coils. So I was looking at my, <laughs> my electronic screwdriver I noticed that this is this knurling effect is pretty nice. As you rotate the cylinder, you can see that the knurl, the, ha the cross hatching pattern is all over it. It's because it's a coil. If you follow one of the lines, you see it just keeps revolving around and rotating with the cylinder. And then there's another set that goes in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and use Fusion 360 and uh, learn how to make that. Excellent. So here's the demo that I whipped up, and uh, it's pretty neat because you can change the user parameters. How awesome is that? Um, so I can come in here and change the diameter if I want to make it a little bit skinnier, I guess. And um, it's just using two coils, and the trick is to use a circular pattern. How awesome is that? So um, it takes a little bit of uh, computing power. So um, depending on how many coils and copies you apply, you may have to uh, wait a little bit uh, for this model to fully calculate. So one tip is to, if you're having a big assembly, maybe make it an external component and then bring it in. That way Fusion doesn't have to cycle every time you update uh, something else in the design. So let's uh, open up a new document and just create our cylinder. So I'll draw here on the four plane. Let's make our circle, make it centered. And then I'll just apply that uh, 50 millimeters. Let's extrude it out to 150. And now I have our cylinder. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is create our coil. So I can just bring that up, hit coil. One thing uh, that, that's interesting behavioral note, if you draw it looking down like this, if I were to draw this here and click, um, it'll actually start making the coil going downwards. Uh, and that's uh, not what I was expecting. So you wanna draw it from the top up if you want it to go up ways. So I'll click on this and then I'll get in the center there and then use that same 50 millimeter diameter. You can see here, we got our little demo, our little preview. Uh, I want to turn off this right now. I guess I could leave it on, I'll turn it off on the next one. Uh, but I wanna leave the type to revolution and height. I wanna leave my diameter at 50. And for revolutions, I'm just gonna put three. It's a pretty low number, but it works in this one. For the height, I do wanna increase this to 150, but I wanna add a little bit to it. And that's because if we look at the top, you'll see that there's a, a bit of a flat edge there and that doesn't really make it super flush. So to do that, we can just make the height a little bit bigger. So I'll make it 154. Now it's still got that there because the section size is so massive. So let's drop that down to one. And now you can see we probably don't even need 154, probably just need 152. So there you go. So now it's just cutting uh, flush there. It's nice and there's no flat edge. It's nice and cut. The next thing I want to do is uh, make sure that my uh, section position is set to the inside and that my section shape, it's really the shape, is, sec is set to the uh, internal, triangular internal, uh, because that's the effect that we're going for. So uh, operation set to cut. That's what I want to do, and I'll hit OK. So now we have our coil. And if we look at the bottom, I forgot to apply a little fix here. You can see that there is that flat edge that I was talking about. Easy to fix that. Um, we could just go back into the extrude, go to the start option, and hit offset plane, and then add maybe two millimeters to that. That way it will start off that. And then we get that nice clean edge there. Same thing with the top. Uh, for the top, we do have to put a little bit of a height adjustment, so let's put that 154 because I added that two to the bottom. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. Excellent. Now we can do the circular pattern. So let's apply the circular pattern and we'll set the pattern type to features. For the objects, all I gotta do is click on that coil in the timeline feature. For the axis, I need to revolve a little bit. I'll click and hold to bring up that depth window and then I can select the Z axis, hide and behind on the inside there. Uh, for the quantity, this is where you wanna play with the numbers a little bit. I want it pretty dense, so I'm gonna make it uh, six, which will make Fusion cry <laughs> if, you, if you do too many. So there we go, uh, this is looking pretty good. Now all we gotta do is make another coil and click that button again to revolve in the opposite direction. All right, so whoop, let's do uh, coil, if I can spell it. Um, again, on the bottom here, the floor plane, come on. Do my circle in the center, 50, enter. Um, now we can turn that off. I really wish Fusion would save this stuff, but hey, so here we go. So it was 154, 
and the section size will make it one. Leave it on the cut as the operation. And hey, the shape and the position are, are good, and so is the type, so I don't have to mess with those. So hit OK. The preview looked good. Uh, and the last thing, I guess, is to do that circular pattern, and then we are uh, we're jamming. So here we go. Axis. I'm going to click and hold again. There's my depth window. Click the depth. What was the quantity? Six, I think. Pretty dense. There we go. Hit OK. Wow. There we go. Now it's juicing. Wow. So there we go. There is our awesome, lovely effect. Very nice. You can totally 3D print this because the edge is chamfered. And um, if we wanted to add those those chamfers you can see here on the edges, you probably want to add those uh, right after the first extrude. So I just jumped back in my timeline. I'll go ahead and apply those chamfers. I'll use a one millimeter because that is the size of our section size in our coil. And I'll, I'll hit OK. And then I'll go to the very end of the timeline. And uh, again, Fusion is going to take a little bit to uh, to recalculate everything. But hey, look at that effect. That is pretty nice. So yeah, I would probably, uh, if you wanted to add more things like internal threads and things like that, you probably want to do all that uh, before we apply the outer uh, knurling effect. But hey, that's how I figured out how to do it. Um, let me guys know if you have any questions or any tips. You can drop them in the comments. That'll help me out and other folks too. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to make a great day. Bye, guys.